Okay, sorry about that, guys. Uh, okay, the um, glitch continues to happen with this program uh, that D has where when I switch from showing you guys a video, the um, computer uh, tends to freeze. So, um, Considering the time, I was going to have Ryan come up and uh, say a few words and talk, but uh, maybe I'll have him uh, come up tomorrow night since you guys uh, got a little bit of a view as to uh, you know what him and his friends uh, are going to be doing. Um, uh, the um, I'm just kind of lost right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm still looking for uh, that one uh, of the women drumming. And yeah, um, it was. Uh, Quite the time at 126. There was a lot of, a lot of laughs. Um, the, uh, the the kids like they were just all over the place. And it was so much fun watching, you know, and meeting so many people. And um, one of the women that I had met, her daughter stood with us on. Um, her and her daughter stood with us on June. Um, uh, what was it? June third, and um, we um, had a uh, like when we were doing the the prayers and stuff at the gate of um, where the thumpers were being held prior to coming out onto one twenty six. Her daughter was pregnant at the time, and. Uh, it was uh, it was so cool as I told her I said you know he's gonna be born pretty soon like real soon and she said um, I forget what date she had given I was like no it's gonna be sooner than that and uh, and she goes oh okay and it kind of you know didn't really uh, say anything or anything and then you know I had I hadn't seen them for a while because uh, of course I was on the mend after uh, June fifth I hadn't been around the camp for quite a while uh, I just kind of in and out helping and uh, of course I couldn't drive um, but uh, I tried to uh, come around as much as I could uh, with a driver most of the time um, but the uh, um, the baby she was carrying, the, the awesome part about this is the baby she was carrying was uh, born on my birthday. And uh, the, um, it, it was a, a little boy and uh, I was, uh, I was at the camp um, and just joking around before I had gone, you know, like, something about having birthday cake at the 134 at the 126 and uh, one of my cousins actually made me a birthday cake and uh, the uh, she brought it down and we all uh, enjoyed some birthday cake and I was told on that day that uh, um, the young the little baby was uh, born on the same day uh, early that morning I guess and uh, so it was pretty awesome to uh, to have that little guy born the same day and you know to, and to be you know standing on the on the line with his mom you know while she was carrying him was uh, even more precious knowing that you know we had that connection from from way back uh, so, uh, 
yeah, we, we, you know, we had a lot of really good times. Um, the uh, one, you know, from every camp, 126, 116, um, the, uh, yeah, um, the things that that was said and done and stuff it, it was uh it was some of it was kind of ridiculous yeah you know but a lot of it was you know just pure fun and uh you know the things that we did we didn't uh you know we didn't do anything maliciously we didn't you know go out to harm you know anybody or anything and uh you know it's unfortunate that um, all of those men in yellow, yellow vest all around us, uh, uh, didn't see it that way, and uh, they insisted on, um, you know, treating us like criminals and uh, treating us as if um, we were. Uh, the ones that were in the wrong and we were the ones that uh, we we weren't where we were supposed to be sort of thing um, and uh, I don't know if it was in their minds or or what that they thought that you know we shouldn't be out there protecting we should be at home or you know we should be somewhere else other than where we were um, it really agitated uh, a lot of people seeing you know a lot of us getting arrested and uh, you know basically just for standing up for our rights um the um you know the everything that led up to the the one uh 134 raid that morning um to me was basically uh you know, a lot of it was uh, provoked by um, some RCMP who thought that they had, uh, they, you know, thought they had the, the right to be there and the right to, uh, to do this to us, um, you know, because it says on their badge to serve and protect, right? Um, but then there was so many that... Uh, you know, they didn't, there were some of them that, you know, you could tell in their heart that they didn't want to be there, uh, but their job put them there. Um, and then you've seen the ones who uh, you know in their eyes, you could see it in their eyes that they, um, they were there to do nothing but harm us. They, you could tell that uh, they took their job way too uh, literally. They um, they didn't want um, the people to um, take a stand. They didn't want the people to uh, to have a voice, and um, which is kind of strange because you know we weren't saying. Um, anything against the RCMP. We're actually uh, trying to help the RCMP. We're trying to uh, help um, even the, their families. Um, and they uh, they couldn't see that, unfortunately. And some of them, you know, like I said, took it in their own hands and uh, decided to dish out their own punishment of sorts and uh, unfortunately there was a, a few of us who you know who ended up having the the brunt of it and, you know myself being one of them but um, hmm. I'm late and I don't know what this one is uh, this was after uh, the 16th. Uh, hmm. Tries to negotiate a deal. <laughs> RCMP. Yeah. There was no negotiations. Uh, 
I don't care who, who they thought they were. Uh, we had the intention. I had mosquitoes all over me here tonight. We had the intention of uh, uh, not leaving until um, these guys actually left and took their uh, their equipment with them. That was pretty well uh, our intent to uh, we didn't want uh, this guy uh, this company to hold our um, community or our, um, our friends or neighbors now our allies um, they actually started off as acquaintances then they turned into allies and then they turned into friends and uh, so many of them are now family and uh, you don't let people hurt your family and uh, that's who we are you know we do not let people hurt our family um, and so all of these uh, different places that we stood together you know we didn't we weren't there to uh, to hurt SWN we weren't there to hurt um, anyone we were there to do what we needed to do to protect our land and water and uh, I remember that one I just looking through some videos here and seeing some things that uh, kind of reminds me of you know a lot of the good times and you know that's kind of what I want to to bring to the people is um, you know what are what are the good times what are the good things that you know happened and um, you know the um, um, I'm gonna let you uh, hear words from one of the others. Good morning. Morning. What a beautiful day for our gathering. I want to share this declaration of unity and solidarity. The citizens of the Maliseet Grand Council are Wolustagawik, the original people of the beautiful river. Our mission is to adhere to, preserve, maintain, and protect the natural laws traditional teachings, and the traditional homeland of the Maliseet Nation, which belong to the future generations of Wolustogawik, in perpetuity. For as long as the grass grows, the sun shines, and the rivers flow. The Maliseet Grand Council does not replace the INAC chief and councils, but we seek to work together for the unity and benefit of the entire Maliseet Nation. The Malsey Grand Council consists of the indigenous people whose traditional homeland takes in all of the land on both sides of the whole of the St. John River watershed from the mouth of the rivers to the headwaters including all tributaries, lakes, streams, forests, all that is above the ground and all that is beneath the ground. The family-based Grand Council is the legitimate pre-existing traditional decision-making structure for the sovereign Malseat Nation. The Malseat Nation was one of the one one of the two sovereign nations, the other being the Mi'kmaq, who signed the first treaty with the United States of America 15 days after they declared independence. We have never surrendered that sovereignty, nor have we surrendered or ceded Aboriginal title to our traditional lands and waters. In 1997, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that Aboriginal land title is a collective right whereby resource developments must be reconcilable with the nature of the Aboriginal nation's attachment to the land and should proceed only after consultation. The Maliseet people have never been consulted collectively or in any way, shape, or form. Consultation requires a process of free, prior, and informed consent. The nature of our relationship to the land and water is a spiritual one. Wabanaki people 
have a unique belief system that is deeply rooted within the earth. And it is reflected in our languages, our ceremonies, and many of the teachings that are traditionally ours. These are irreconcilable with Canadian law and the, and the destructive process of mining and or extractive industry, such as hydro, hydraulic fracturing. Therefore, Canada must rule on the side of Aboriginal people and not proceed with current resource developments without our permission. <laughs> to do otherwise, Canada is in violation of their own laws. Stop all mining and extractive industry in our lands. <laughs> the Maliseet Grand Council stands firmly in solidarity with the Mi'kmaq people within all of the traditional Mi'kmaq districts who are on the front lines in the protection of our land and water from SWIN, the American company out of Texas, and the seismic testing and drilling for oil and her natural gas, natural gas by way of fracking. The Maliseet Grand Council declares and asserts that the Assembly of First Nation, whose claim it is to represent us all and who have access to all of our funds, should provide adequate legal representation for all of those who have been illegally arrested on bogus charges of mischief and obstruction. Failure to do so will necessitate a call for a forensic investigation into the entire Department of Indian Affairs Canada, from top to bottom. The Mousy Grand Council advocates for all of our relations in the natural world, including all other living things. That is the declaration from the Mousy Grand Council, and I would just like to say uh, further that this whole issue is not just about Elsie Boktuk and it's not fair to them for us to, to focus solely on them even though we thank them from our hearts that they are on the front lines. We happen to be in the neck of the woods. But the issue is for all Mi'kmaq and all of our territories in, in, in Wabanaki country. It's about all of those who are allied and all of those who, who, who depend on the land and the water and the air to, for, our live, for our life. So it is with the spirit of unity and solidarity that I offer these words today. And I'm very proud of the people who have been here at this peace camp for, for keeping it peaceful because all it would take would be one wrong move, and believe you me, that's what they will point to. And all of the work that has been done by these great people will be for naught. I also would like to ask you that whenever you stand up, and I'm speaking to everyone here, remember that it's your responsibility to acknowledge the peace and friendship treaties that our ancestors signed and the obligation to take care of the land and the water and the air. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, you know, there's um, really, um, not much more to say after that. Um, our elder uh, clan mother from the um, Los Dugalit, uh territory basically has said it all, and uh, with um, you know what what can I say really? So. Um, uh, I, I'm tired right now. Uh, it's been a long weekend of getting ready for fundraising and everything else. And so um, right now it's 11.04 Atlantic time. 
I have to be up uh, in about hmm, six hours to go to work. So um, I'm going to say good night. And um, like I have been doing every other night, um, I have been signing off with our Nigma Honor Song. And um, I want to again sign off with the same song and uh, thank everybody for listening and um, I hope to see you all again. I'm glad to see all of the uh, new, uh, we we're up to seven viewers at one point. Um, so glad that you've all been here and uh, thank you again.